Sam Pitt. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of The Pit Stop, where if it's Friday and you're here, then it's time for The Pit Stop, the new Pit Stop, the Cut the Fat Pit Stop, where we rifle through the news very quickly. And if you want to participate in conversation about any of the topics that we do discuss here on the show today, the links are in the description here on YouTube if you want to see them for yourself, or if you join us at Simpit Live on Twitch immediately following the show, We'll go through the topics and talk about things in greater detail, uh, at least as long as the community wants to. I will be there as long as you guys want to chat about things, and as soon as we've wrapped things up, I'll move on to my Friday festivities, which, as you guys know, for Friday, for me, Fridays, for me, kick off the weekend. Friday is the, the night that I start with my Oval Series racing. Usually we're doing some Assetto Corsa Competizione on su Saturday, and then of course our Sunday Road Series. So I'm always excited and pumped up for Friday. And then the other thing that I just love and always have loved about Fridays is just that general mindset uh, of Fridays. Uh, people are always in a good mood. And, and geez, I think tonight I even have Game 3, the World Series. Uh, tonight we're going to do some fun racing. So great things. Really excited about the weekend. Great projects going on around the shop. Um, starting to get into the flow of the new uh, tempo or template of the Sim Pit, uh, doing this recorded, pre-recorded pit stop, and trying to get more content out at a much faster rate than we previously have, and still stream all of our races on, on Twitch. So things are really starting to come along, and I'm getting very comfortable with it, and tremendous support and feedback from the community, so I appreciate that from all of you out there, I really do. So what is going on in sim racing? Uh, what, what are the big things going on? I mean, at this point in time, really the the biggest eSport championship running is the Coca-Cola, eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. And we are now, just like the real life uh, counterpart, we are into that, that playoff, uh, shootout playoff type uh, scenario where drivers need to earn their way into the finals to have a shot at the win, uh, narrowing it down to the top four for the final race. Anyway, the latest is uh, Nick Ottinger. He secured his eNASCAR championship for, it's the fourth season, birth with his victory at Kansas. So $100,000 goes to the winner, $300,000 total purse for the series. And we are getting down to, to serious crunch time. At this point, um, what, Zelensky and Ottinger are the two drivers who have locked into the championship. And the next race will lock in the next driver. Um, and then we will have our, our four drivers. Actually, is that the way it works? I'm a little confused on that. Sorry about that. Uh, next Tuesday. So the iRacing Series playoff round of eight concludes next Tuesday at Texas Motor with playoff drivers facing one Lance Chance to stave off elimination with a win or by piling up. So anyway, we're down to these eight drivers are the only drivers who have a shot at the championship, that being Bobby Zelensky, Nick Ottinger, Jimmy Mullis, Ryan Lusa, Garrett Lowe, Keegan Leahy, Ray Alfala, and Michael Conti. Uh, all of those names have been said on our show many a time because they are really the best of the best in the NASCAR. Best of the best oval sim racers on planet Earth. I mean, there's no debating that. You can say what you want about various esports and what you think is the best sim or what you think is the best group of drivers, whatever. Um, hands down, this is the pinnacle of oval racing in the sim racing world. And right now, Nick Ottinger looking number one. A little mishap there at Kansas apparently as well. Uh, let's see, Christian Solberg scores an IRX all-star victory in his Atlanta debut. So we talked about the incredible drivers, the likes of, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, Tim Stevens, Kevin Swindell, um, all sorts of huge names, uh, Scott Speed, obviously, um, Bucky Lasick, a lot of, a lot of super pro drivers in this. But anyway, Christian Solberg scores his first all-star victory at Atlanta. Uh, let's see. Solberg was one of them. I, I don't know. Who is Solberg? Sounds like a... Uh, sounds like a, a rally cross. Sounds like a rally driver name, doesn't it? Uh, what else? John Robertson in the, in the iRacing Pro Championship. John Robertson takes his first IRX World Championship victory at Atlanta. So both... The All-Star and the Pro Race were both at Atlanta. And our finishing order there in the Pro Series, look at this, Bobby Zelensky finishes in 7th. 
Are you kidding me? Uh, actually, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, I'm not as gifted as a Bobby Zelensky, but I feel like I'm a pretty decent driver in just about any discipline you put me in. Uh, Mitchell DeJong finishing fifth. Ja John Robertson finishing first. Johan Harth in second. Tommy Holloman, Hallman in third. Um, and our driver's points. Robertson in the lead. Alakainen in second and Hearth in third. Mitchell DeJong having a tough season in fourth place in the standings as of now. There's our little victory photo of Nick Ottinger having locked in uh, his spot into the championship. So at the end of next race, we'll lock all of the spots. One more driver will get dropped. Uh, the drivers securing wins are guaranteed in even if they have total failure. Uh, and now it's all coming back to memory. Uh, so uh, the next race, which we mentioned the next race already. Um, I know I said it earlier. Uh, Texas. So at Texas, one more driver from this list will be dropped out, essentially. And it will put it down to seven drivers, I do believe, for the finale. I think. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, what else? I think that's it. We just had the recap there. Round one of the Imps at Triple Crown. Uh, that was going on. Email a preview. The big news was Nick. Uh, no, there's actually more. JR Motorsports. Newly crowned NASCAR Weekly Series champion Josh Berry talks to media today about his championship season. All right. Oh, this too. Sorry, sorry. In today's patch... AI arrives for the NASCAR B-Class. Hop behind the wheel of one of NASCAR Xfinity cars and give it a try. So if that's a series you run in or you want to practice against the AI, uh, there was the latest patch on the 22nd yesterday, and that should have added that. Here we have our interview with Josh Berry, who is the winner of the NASCAR Weekly Series Challenge. And here is a big news. Dale Jr. names Josh Berry to drive the first half of 2021 at X NASCAR Xfinity scheduled for the number eight entry. Uh, post here by Josh Berry. What a day. I can't believe it. I'm so excited and so thankful. You never know what's ahead every day when you get up. Never give up. Great words. Great words of wisdom from Josh Berry. And here's our championship uh, points. There you go. And that's it for iRacing. Soto Corsa. Today they had an update. This was a few days ago. There was an update. Whoa, that's not what we wanted. There was an update a few days ago, and we have a community blog with all the uh, notes. But rolling out an update for their console players, which tackles a number of bugs and issues. I had some bugs and issues on my Xbox version. Um, so general localization, UI, peripherals. Uh, True Force audio now returns when hot plugging a 923 wheel in. So... Some updates to the console version in particular. Uh, so we have, uh, yeah, two days ago, we had the latest in the R-Factor news. And this is their Nurburg Nordschleife PBR update. So obviously they've been working on the GT3 balance performance uh, adjustments, physics. Uh, not forgetting, of course, their 2020 Bentley Continental and Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo which both came out. Anyway, they couldn't let their one-year anniversary, their most substantial track release, pass without some additional love from the studio. And now, 12 months from the bringing of this great venue to our factor, that being Nordschleife, we've given all layouts a sus substantial refresh in terms of both visuals and optimization. And the res results are, if we do say so ourselves, rather pleasant indeed. It's a nice shot of the BMW at the Schleife. Uh, hell, green hell. And so anyway, they've, they've updated that as well as working on. So in real terms, the development team have been working incredibly hard behind the scenes to add all of the latest PBR shaders and lighting balances to the track for this new upgrade, bringing the Nordschleife itself and the various additional layouts of the venue bang up to date with the latest visual developments within R-Factor 2. So a little, little mini update as a birthday present. A birthday gift for lovers of the Schleife um, for our factor two. So that's good. And then on Twitter, they're talking about the GT. So I, I haven't been following this one, forgive me, but the GT Challenge by VCO, I do believe. But round one was live four days ago, and I didn't get a chance to watch it, showing off some of the Ferraris, 
A pole position goes to Jerry, Jerry Toman of Varga Sim Racing in the Corvette. And some shots at Sebring, some video. This is exactly the action we had expected. All right, let's try to get some audio on this one. Oh. oh, that's a brilliant move from Hemmingson, inspired down the inside of Tower Corner. Oh, he's trying to cut in, though. Jordi Spears is absolutely there, my friend. And unfortunately, that advantage not really going to work your way. He's still grabbed the inside into the next section of road, trying to cover it off with Jordi Spears. That's There's a gonna huge move. He's going to push him straight off the road. No, not quite. Good, good, uh, good racing for them. Is it gonna be oh, the another bump. Oh, you can't do that. And Jordi Spears is going to drop down. Hey, oh, my. Who's that? That blue car is. Oh. Oh, please no. Oh, please no. <laughs> Nicely done, guys. Round the outside. Round the outside. That was good. That was good stuff. Uh, we have a winner. Uh, hush. Shh. Earmuffs, if you don't want to know. GT Challenge Series powered by VCO season opener. Congrats to VRG Magic MSM, aka McCall Smittle of Varga Sim Racing. Um, do we have a call at the what line? Race of the second season in the GT Challenge Series powered by VCO. Mikael Smeedle comes out of the final corner in a dominant drive for Varga Sim Racing. It's a victory for him. Victory number one of the season goes to Smeedle. Good job. Good job. Uh, who will win the feature race? So that was the sprint race. Uh, the feature race is live. Cars directly behind as well. Turn one didn't go quite so well for them. It's it underway, and Jakobs leads clear. The two uh, Pinsin Drillers cars are definitely side by side. Hopefully, no contact between the two of them. Matt Rich is in second place. Should be able to cover up easily. Jordi Spears already up into fifth place on the inside of Vandernovsky as well. Could be up to fourth. I think that was Alan Terzic running wide right on board with Sneed on the right hand side of your screen, focused on the lead at the left. Jordi Spears up to fourth place. Let's keep an eye there. So, yeah. All right. Uh, they all want to win it. That was hey, good stuff. The inside, he's not really there, but he's, he's forcing the gap open, and Smeedle's not quite on the podium. Andonovsky's holding firm around the outside of the hairpin. That's going to be a horrendous crash here. <laughs> you do get the feeling that is going to be the case. Andonovsky's going to try and cover it off to the off inside. The oh, yeah, he's not, you're not there, Smeedle. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, Jeez, so Louise. Oh, it up. oh it's, this is very aggressive. It's 14 at the moment. Uh, the feature race is a wrap. Victory goes to Zancho Simsports, Matt Richards. Oh. That was a one and two. We're going to watch that again. Oh, he's a mess. Yeah, he absolutely is. That is a terrible shame. We must focus on the head of the field. The timer has ticked down to zero. A first race victory in GT Challenge Season 2 is awaiting this man, the Welshman. Zancho By a long shot. He just got out of that. Race, leading the field. It is a well-deserved victory. He has held his own at the front of the field. And Matt Richards becomes the second victor of Season 2. Well done to him. All right, there you go. And there he is. There's a good shot of the winning car. And I think that's it. We already covered Nurburg. Um, yep, that's it there. All right, Dirt 5, not a lot, but we do have the confirmed Dirt car, Dirt 5 car list. Seven decades of off-road machines, 13 classes, trucks, buggies, rally icons, rock bouncer, sprint. Cars never featured before in video games. And uh, actually, I already had that, so we can skip one. Uh, traveling Globe. All right. Super Lights, the Aerial Nomad. Aerial Nomad Tactical, Amplified Edition exclusive. Oh, got to get that Amplified Edition if you want the Nomad Tactical version. Uh, Armada Engineering Class 10, Blitz World Beast. We've got the likes of a Brenthal... Industries Class 10, Eximotive, Exocet, Off-Road, Speed Car, Wonder. I don't know what some of these are. The WS uh, Volkswagen Baja Beetle. 
that's not it. And an ID buggy. We got this crazy auto racing mud claw. Fictional. Formula Off-Road. WS Auto Racing Titan. Fictional. Unlimited cars. Modern rally cars. Classic cars. Rally. 80s cars. Stratus 911. Porsche 911. Porsche 924. Yeah, pretty significant, bizarre list of cars. <laughs> oh, just, just as I said, bizarre. Jupiter Hawk 410, fictional. So anyway, there is the car list. I have the link there if you want to check out the cars yourself. A little bit of driver update in the rankings for F1 2020. I, I kind of like that they do this now that I, I, I mentioned this story. That they take real-life data, real-life results, and then they update the driver values and and points um, somewhat actively. So that's kind of cool. So we see some guys going up. Lando Norris going up. Max Verstappen going up. Pierre Gasly going up. And Charles Leclerc going up. So that's new for F120. That's all I have for F1. Yeah, the guys from... Uh, that's kind of news. Not sim racing news, but... Haas team losing both of their drivers simultaneously. Kind of an odd movement. Gran Turismo posted this, and all it says is hashtag GT7, hashtag PS5. And I just thought, you know, we sometimes do those before and after. We shot, saw, like, the Fanatic before, you know, 20-year-ago wheel versus today's wheel. We've talked about box covers. Um, in fact, I think WRC alludes to that in the next story here. Um... This shot should make you really appreciate where we're going or where we've come, how far we've come. Uh, really amazing that that is a video game, nonetheless a driving video game, and uh, amazing what they've done with graphics over the years. It really is. And I know we want to point fingers and talk about, we always do shows on how things can be better. I don't know if we often look back and and talk about how lucky we are to have certain things in sim racing. But perhaps we need to do that. Uh, WRC. Nope, it was their sale. So it's 25% off WRC 9. It's time to get spooky with the Epic Games Halloween sale. Save 25% on WRC 9 during its first sale ever. There you go. Um, they did. There is there before. How it started, 2001. I, I didn't post this. I wasn't going to because I'm like, well... That's not a huge gap. I guess it is 19 years. Wow. Nine edition, 19 years. And that's it from them. Race Room. This week's new ranked multiplayer schedule is up, including a very special weekly endurance event, the Spa 2.4. Uh, this could be a fun race for you guys, for me as well. Anyway, uh, it's so awesome how many variations of Sim at this point in time you can take a GT3-esque, GT3-ish, a uh, group of cars uh, and race them together. Even in sims that are known as single make sims like in iRacing, even as a great GT3 class. But, you know, we talked about R Factor 2 earlier. We talk about iRacing all the time. A set of course, a competizione obviously being built on that concept. And then, of course, you've got Race Room with theirs. And now you can do that in their weekly series, which is really awesome. I uh, want to congratulate from Wednesday's Hot Lap Pump Day. Oh, I could have, would have, could have, should have. Oh, I had a really good Hot Lap Pump Day on Wednesday, and I, I, I blew it in the end. I cracked under pressure. You know, you have the 14-year-old phenom in your mirror and simultaneously talking to you while you're racing. And uh, for a guy like me, that's some added pressure. Anyway, I cracked under the pressure, and I ate the final bumper at uh, Daytona, the new Daytona Road with the NASCAR bumpers. I think it's the NASCAR bumpers. Uh, anyway, hot lap hump day this week, once again, goes to Elvis Rankin. Best lap time, 148.847. I don't recall what I ran. I think I ran a... I don't remember what I ran. It was pretty close to that. It might have been a 48.9, if I'm not mistaken. Um, anyway, congratulations, Elvis. Good job by you. Euro Truck. Uh, so, 8th anniversary. Who do, Can you imagine 8 years of Euro Truck Simulator 2? Uh, but yeah, apparently, uh, it is their 8th anniversary. Last year, they, they celebrated, and they're doing it once again this year. So, Euro Truck, on the 18th of October, Euro Truck 2 is released to the world in 2012. 
Since then, it has been truly amazing ride, blah, blah, blah. Even though the world is currently going through a challenging period, we want to take a few minutes of our time to say thank you to our hashtag best community ever. I, I don't disagree with that. It's an incredible community over in the Trucking Sims uh, for all the wonderful support, for being our motivation and helping us make our games even better as time goes on. And because we are in a celebration mood, we thought it would be nice to appreciate, appropriate to reward you with a slice of the birthday cake. Hence, we decided to show you something yet unrevealed. Still in pre-alpha stage, but already cool and promising. A few screenshots from the next map expansion for Euro Truck 2, which is already in the making and planned to be in the next release after Iberia. And they never told us what it was. Uh, how do you like them? Do you have an idea on the location of these shots? So, where are we, guys? You guys are going to have to tell me because I have never been to Europe. Anyone? Anyone? I'm looking for clues. I don't see anything that would be a clue to a foreigner. Foreigner. Where are they? Oh, this is a shot. <laughs> and this is a shot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, writing. That looks Russia. Is this Russia? I don't know. You guys will know, I'm sure. I'm sure somebody out there knows exactly where this is. Anyway, uh, for now, we can't share any more info with you as we have switched our focus back to Iberia. But now that you know, we'll bring you more about this. Anyway, kind of a little cool birthday tease from Euro Truck Simulator. Uh, Boxes Lap has an article. This could be helpful to some of you out there. You might want to check it out. Ultimate Engineering Toolkit for Sim Racing 2020. Talk about different uh, telemetry software. Talk about telemetry racing books. Talking about coaching and setups. Uh, audio and spotters. I just finally used Crew Chief last week. I can't believe it took me so long to get there. Overlay tools. Uh, really, really great resource of sim racing information. And again, I have the link in the description here at YouTube if you want to check it out. But it is at Box This Lap, and it's called Ultimate Engineering Toolkit for Sim Racing. I think a lot of you guys can use some of the information in there. All right, let's talk about some sim rigs, talk about sim pit racing, and then get on with the weekend. This was posted by Winty Fresh on Reddit. After three years of using a play seat challenge, he finally decided to go with a permanent setup. Boy, did he. That's a big leap from a play seat challenge, I gotta say. When you go from a play seat challenge to a full motion chair, um, gotta love his uh, shoes sitting up on there as well. Got himself a fanatic setup. Obviously runs in VR, no need for monitors. And I'll tell you what, I've been running some VR, and uh, I don't like running VR without a fan. I see he's got a cool fan on a GoPro mount. That's kind of well done. I like that. And is that a handbrake on the wrong side? No, his handbrake is right next to his wheel. He's got his shifter further off to the right, DOF uh, rig there. Nice looking. Other than cable management hell over there. <laughs> but what a setup. What a, what a step up from a play seat. All right. This one was posted by Razzle41. Just finished putting it all together. Now to get everything configured. Nice, clean sim racing corner. Looks like it might be down in the basement. The power panel. I'm not sure. Uh, do like this setup. I like these big, giant monitors that he's got. I noticed he went with the curvature on the three instead of giving it more angle which i think makes it look really clean but probably leaves it a little too flat uh for me i like a little more angle i need to get tucked into my monitors better we're gonna have to do another revamp of the rig coming up at some point in time i can see that coming uh anyway uh again that was posted by razzle raziel 41 and a really nice just simple, clean-looking rig. Well done. Uh, another, uh, so, Placey Challenge. Speak of Placey Challenge. Well, if you're in an apartment, you're at school, living in a dorm, you don't have a lot of options, right? But 
What if you utilize your TV on a clever stand and just pull a placey challenge up when you want to race? This is posted by The Flying Snowman, his small apartment sim rig progression. Boom. Aww. Aww. Look at the cat. You got tiny little front paws. Dee 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 dee. <laughs> you know, for that, the 49 curved is, is a perfect solution. I like that a lot in that scenario. Uh, this is posted by Hype36R Man. Prepping his son for success. We all have to start somewhere. Yeah, well, I wish I, wish I could have been sim racing like this at home at that age. It would have made a difference. I'd probably be faster. Yeah, he's got dual setups. Booyah. What was that? You're going to, if you want to do, so when we come back, I want to know what that is. Right there. I can't even tell. I'm going to need help. We are going to look at some of this in better detail when we go to Simpit Live after this show finishes. And we're going to go through some of the stories, including taking our voyeuristic moment of really going through uh, some of these videos. I saw a stream deck. I see a giant stream deck over here. I saw a flight stick. Road Mike. This guy's badass. This is Hype 36R Max. And his kid giving it a drive. Gotta love it. This, this, this is cool. This made me smile this morning. My sim room set up, including friends. So, Bretherton, Brett Horton, J. Brett Horton, Brett Horton. J. Brett Horton. Sorry about that, J. Uh, look at this. So, Instead of just upgrading his own, he went ahead and kept the old rig. And now he can race with his buddies. I wish I had friends who would come over. I have a rig sitting right there. I wish I had friends who would come over and drive it. Um, I'm assuming he... Uh, oh, I'm not going to tease. Uh, look at it. He has his own... I see a motor. This guy's awesome. We're going to talk about this in Sim Pit Live as well. He's got all sorts of tidbits of personality in his world here. This was posted by Cheekiness. <laughs> Cheekiness. Racing in New York City. He's six foot six and started hunched over on a G29. He's so happy he can comfortably race for hours now. No doubt. No doubt. Oh, look at this. This is like a... There's his kitchen. Ah! Tune in at Simpit Live if you want to play the voyeuristic game. There is a shot. I like his display. Nice looking setup there, Cheeky. And I believe that takes us to Sim Pit Racing, and then we're going to call it a day. So, what do we got? Last week, Friday night, Mark Michkowski kicked butt once again. No, it's been a while. Mark Michkowski back to victory lane, uh, winning at Kentucky. Billy Strange finishing in second. Joe Hildinger finishing in third. And David Clymer fourth. Wayne Roberts finishing in fifth. And with that... That series is now on our halfway break. T tonight, we are going to be doing something else. I'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, next week, we'll get five flag speedway to begin the second half of our season. Four races to go, go to declare a champion in our ARCA series. David Clymer leading the points with a 10-point margin over Billy Strange. Mark Michkowski just a few points back of that. Brand Skinner and Jerry Watson round out our top 10. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. All right, and then that takes us to what are we doing tonight? So last time we had some free time on a Friday, it was about a month ago, we ran a dual event Crandon race. We did uh, Pro 2 Trucks followed by Pro 4 Trucks at Crandon. We are going to do something like that. We might do exactly that. I'm going to talk to my admin team if they have better suggestions. But tonight, starting at 5 o'clock, we are going to do open, simpit, fun dirt racing of some sort. Uh, we're going to start at 5. You're going to want to tune in at Simpit Live at 5 o'clock. I'll give out the passwords of the event, 
or if you're part of our Discord community, I'll mention uh, what we got going on as soon as we have it confirmed. Five o'clock, we got that for sure. Probably about a half hour practice, and we're probably going to do two different races, maybe some kind of heat racing, depending on what we pick. It might even be rally cross. Got to give it a little bit of thought, and I'll talk to my team. But tonight is all about fun, and it's all about doing it in the dirt, and it's all about hanging out with you guys. So if you want to race with me, the pit crew, the rest of the Sim Pit community, just make sure you tune in. Sim Pit Live on Twitch tonight at 5 o'clock, and we'll do that racing, and I'll be giving out the password for everyone to join us. Uh, on Sunday, we were at Watkins Glen for race number four in the Simpit LMP2 League, and it was Anthony Murano Jr. who won the race. Matt Wagner finishing in second. Chris Generelli in third. Randa White and Zoran Radosavic are our top five, and we are also on a break for that. So Sunday, we're going to do a replacement. I'll talk about that in just a moment here. Uh, but the Simpit LMP2 Championship also on hold. Next week, we'll be at Suzuka next Sunday, not this coming, Suzuka, as we kick off the second half of that season. At our midway point, Rand oh, Randall White leading in the points, 154. Good margin over Anthony Morano Jr. with 126. Gonzalo Perone in third. James Dowling and Brandel McGrew are our top five in that series. And so Sunday, since we're on an intermission, Sunday at our normal time, 10 o'clock for practice, 11 o'clock, I believe, for the race. Uh, again, tune in on our Discord channel. I'll be live on Simpit Live uh, on Twitch on Sunday morning for this one. And we'll give the password out to anybody who wants to join us. We're going to be doing a one-off race, 100 laps, uh, road course, the Indy, the Indy car at Indy Road Course. Um, I believe is the combination we're running. Don't quote me on that, but that'll be this coming Sunday. In addition to that, tomorrow morning, we will be having an Assetto Corsa Competizione practice race at Monza. Next week is the Simpit Patron Race. It's the final Saturday of the month. It'll be the Simpit Patron Appreciation Race at Monza in Assetto Corsa Competizione. We will be challenging, uh, picking a new trophy winner for that race. And if you'd like to be part of that, there's still time to join the Simpit patron team. Just go to patron.com forward slash the Simpit and check out our various tiers on how you can support our show and be eligible to win t-shirts and be taking part in our trophy races and things like that. Get exclusive previews of certain videos and a bunch of cool perks. And you get to support the show, which is the main point of that whole program. So without that patron group, we just wouldn't survive. And when I show our credits at the end of each show, that is, those are the people who support this show. And without that list of people, we just wouldn't have the resources that we have, and I appreciate them so much in so many ways. So anyway, that is going to do it for today's show. I think we got things done in a reasonable amount of time. Gives you plenty of time to get out there and do some sim racing. Have a great weekend out there. Be safe. Win some trophies. Tell me what you do. Send me pictures of your rig. All that good stuff. Have a great weekend, everybody. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track. Thank <laughs> you.